Good evening. Dark Sage Walker here, and we're going to play some more Isaac while talking about things that <clears throat> that generally interest me. <clears throat> and also trying to figure out why I still have a bit of a, a bit of a stuffed throat. Whoops. Believe it or not, I actually didn't want to do that. So let's exit game, and we're going to look at challenges. Gotta be gotta be one of these that we can do, that we can do without too much difficulty. How about? Like I said without too much difficulty, though. What does Darkness Falls start with? Um. Honestly, this seems pretty easy. And she's starting with the razor blade. All right. Yeah, I think this is going to be our run. So, last run, last run was a good, was a good fun run. Matter of fact, it was two runs in one. And it gave us plenty of time to talk about the new Nintendo Direct, and we had all sorts of fun, didn't we? Well, this won't be the same, the same sort of fun run. Matter of fact, I plan on getting good and angry today. Well, why is that? Why are you, why are you getting, why are you getting so mad about things? Well, for those who don't follow gaming news. It was recently announced that Activision, as part of their reaction to their stocks apparently not not becoming as strong as they would have liked, and yes, that is pretty much how it, how it went. Their stocks just aren't as strong as they would have liked. Oops, uh, that was stupid. Have announced them. Wow, I'm not even trying right now. Oh well, can't always be perfect, right? What can you do? Moving on. They announced on from not too long ago that they're going to be um, putting forth a number of layoffs. Well, how many layoffs? I mean, it can't possibly be that bad. I mean, if their their stocks are plummeting, surely, hmm, surely it won't be that bad, right? Yeah, try 775 layoffs. Here's 70, 775 workers. Working men and women like you, like you and me, who still need to put food on the table, that no longer have work because Activision is butthurt about their sales. It's almost 800 people, and I had also read that this isn't even including Blizzard's division in in France, which is current, which is currently unsure of whether, which sorry, has 400 people that are currently unsure of whether or not they've got jobs. And I don't know if that's in addition to the people we know don't have jobs, or if that's including them. So, for all we know, there's nearly 1,200 people out there without work because because of this. Okay, now let's let's back up a step and 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 to take this uh, take this a little bit lighter. So things might not be as Things on that front might not be as bad as I'm making it out to be. I mean, companies lose money all the time. They got to do what they can to save to save face and make sure that they're that they're hitting their profit shares, right? Well, I would agree with you. Well, I would agree with you on on any number of those accounts. Here's where I here's where I take a look at it and go, this ain't the same deal. Um, oh, hey, secret. And more money. Speaking of, speaking of, speaking of monetary transactions, why not? Go away, you flies. You don't interest me. Sweet. Oh, no, you don't. I ain't in it for that kind of mess. Yeah, might as well check the shop before I leave this floor. <clears throat> so here's here's where I where I say no. I actually rather disagree with your take on this. Problem number one. <clears throat> Looking uh huh, having looked over their sales from the from the previous year and some, put and putting everything into perspective. They announced that they were they were doing this, these layoffs, and then nearly in the same breath, the same 
fucking breath. They said, yes, Lulu, I'm upset about it too. They said that they had that they had actually they'd actually broken record record amounts of money having been made in the last year. So, if they're making record amounts of cash, why are they laying off anyone? <laughs> yes, I will take that. I would love for this run to be super fucking easy. Thank you. You're a gentleman in a scholar game. Yeah, I don't need the razor blade anymore, so I'm taking Mom's box of trinkets. So, record-breaking sales. Still decided they needed to lay off, <laughs> lay off nearly 800 thinking, feeling blips from within their company. Sounds uh, sounds like the mark of a good business decision, don't you think? I know that there are some people who are gonna who are gonna be like, yeah, well, that's that's how it, that's how the system works. If you're in, if your sales are down, then you got to do what you can to save money. Problem number one: they're not they're not necessarily saving money. They're doing they're doing this mostly because they're trying to improve their profit share. This is this is about pleasing their shareholders. It has nothing to do with staying afloat. Remember, record-breaking sales. These people have no need to do what they did. None whatsoever. They simply did it because fucking greed. That's it. And I would be quiet about that point, but I can't. Because they're talking about the livelihoods of people. The livelihoods of people who are just trying to provide for them and theirs. That's it. That's what that's what's got me so upset about this, is that they're making nothing but money right now. And yet their take on the matter is, yeah, we don't need all these people working for us. No, I don't actually want that. Then there then there's point number two to be made about this whole mess. They recently announced they recently made made Dennis Durkin, who I believe was their old CFO. They recently named him as their new CFO, and as a as a means of sweetening the deal, they gave him essentially essentially an equivalent number of bonuses equal to about 15 million dollars. So think about think about this for a minute. They don't have enough money to pay 800 to pay 800 of their employees. But they got all the money in the world to give the to give their top-ranking guys all the fucking money they want. So let me get this straight, Activision. You can afford to give your CFOs 15 million dollars worth of bonuses. Of of which of that, some of that is a signing bonus. Some of that is is in stock options. And, so, and part of that is a $900,000 salary. This man isn't hurting for nothing. If I can find a way to get up to 15 coins before I leave this floor, that'd be great. But right now, let me just focus on survival. So, $15 million. That this fucker is... This fucker's getting just for signing on as Activision CFO. By the way, for those who don't know what it means, CFO means means Chief Financial Officer. Ugh, if only I could. If only I could. That's right, Dark Bum is gonna be doing more than enough work. Matter of fact, let's go back and pick up some of those other hearts. So, let's recap. Dennis Durkin gets $15 million just for signing on. <clears throat> the company itself making huh, making huge amounts of profit. Enough so so that the little dip that their stocks took not too long ago, probably not a very big deal. But 800 employees? Fuck them. And this is how the system is supposed to work. 
This is how... Hmm? This is how, what, companies make money by basically destroying the livelihoods of the people that work for them? Because if that is how the system is supposed to work, if that's how everything everything goes when we're firing on all cylinders, then fuck them. I can't stand the way that these... that these big... well, big companies in general work, let alone... Let alone these bull bullshit big game publisher types. Now, anyone who's been paying any amount of attention would be going, "Well, how can you say that you're against big game publishers when you've sell when you've said yourself you like Nintendo? They're a big game publisher. They probably do a lot of the same things." <clears throat> Hold my beer. Nintendo has been through has been through these has been through big market share problems. They've during the during the launch of the 3DS and during and during pretty much the entirety of the three uh the three, let's say the same thing again the Wii U's life cycle they they were not pulling in the sort of profits that are. Contingent to a, the sort of company, the sort of big company that Nintendo is. But instead of laying off employees in order to in order to improve the market share, in, in order to improve their market shares for their shareholders, sorry, I'm so angry about this I can't even talk right. Yeah, but since when is that ever different? Shut up. The voice in my head is getting sassy now. But instead of instead of laying off employees in order to improve their share in, in order to improve their shareholds, I know I'm not saying it right. Whatever, you get the idea. In order to improve their in order to improve their stock portfolio, they decided that some of the people at the top were going to take pay cuts. This is very much the opposite of what we're seeing from Activision. They willingly took pay cuts in order to make sure that people didn't ha didn't have to get laid off. To make sure that people did still have jobs. Now, if you're anything like me, and... Well, I, at the moment I'm pretty sure I'm just speaking to myself, but oh well. If you're anything like me, you're going, Well, why didn't Activision just do the same thing? <laughs> if, they, if they can afford to pay their pay their new newly anointed CFOs fifteen million dollars just to sign on, surely they can afford a bit of a pay cut in order to make it so people don't have to get fired. They can, but they won't. And that ultimately is the issue here. Okay, so I may just let this build up and then never and then never touch mom's box of trinkets again. Activision has gone out of their way to screw people over in order to improve their market shares. Does this sound like the mark of a the mark of a response of a responsible company to you? Because if it does, I get the feeling there's something seriously wrong in your head. This is not what someone who is responsible for, for the livelihoods of thousands of people does in order to make sure that they can continue to to lead fruitful lives. Oh, hello. Um, yeah, why not? Oh, really? Okay. I'm confused. But ultimately, I think this is the right move. There we go, look at that. All stats up. Thank you, Dim Bulb. Or not Dim Bulb, Illuminated Bulb. Vibrant Bulb, that's it. <laughs> Shut up. You played that game for how many hours and you don't you don't know the name of the item you're carrying? I said shut up. I don't like it when the voice in my own head gets sassy with me. <laughs> the 
So, Nintendo <clears throat> Nintendo sets an example by having the by having the people at the top of their command take pay cuts in order to preserve the jobs of the people working for them. Activision, just the opposite. Hmm. Some trendsetters you guys are in the world of video games. I'm curious about something. Neat, but I think I'd rather have the bulb. I love this room. This room is my friend. And by the, and by the way, Nintendo was asked why they didn't why they didn't do that sort of thing. They in an interview they they said that by laying on, by laying off people just to just to save money it puts undue stress on their workforce. They don't want people to be worried about whether or not they're going to have you know trivial things like I don't know food. They want people to feel secure in their jobs so that they can so that they can continue to make, to make the best games possible that will appeal to the largest number of people. That's Nintendo. And keep in mind, I don't necessarily beautiful. Glad I got got a chance to react to that. And for, oh, I should use Dice Shard. And for what it's worth, I don't necessarily agree with everything Nintendo does. I know I describe myself as a fanboy, but I'm not for everything Nintendo does. Case in point, Nintendo Switch Online. And I know that they're trying to find ways to sweeten the deal to make it to make it worthwhile. One of which being Tetris Battle Royale. Hi, what is this all about? Again, I know it's called Tetris 99. That's not what it is. It's Tetris Battle Royale. It's the most ridiculous concept since, well, video game about driving a bus. You know when we started, I know of at least two of those. Not including Crazy Taxi. I'm not even sure if you can drive a bus in that game. Eh. So, like I said, I don't necessarily just jump on board with everything Nintendo does. They've made some bad moves in the past. Some, ser some serious boners. But I think on the whole, they're still the, you know, they're still the game company that I have the most respect for. And it's because they, they're the ones that show the most respect to the people around them. And again, not always. Not everything they do is perfect. But I think enough of what they do is good that it outweighs some of <laughs> outweighs some of the bullshit. Let's take this outside. Alright. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, Mystery Gift is just a free pedestal item, and what you get out of it depends on where you use it, so. If you ever come across anyone who's like, oh, Mystery Gift is just another shop item, that's dumb. Well, it's only a shop item if you want it to be a shop item. Otherwise, it is whatever you make of it. And you know what? It's glorious. So if you're complaining that all you're getting out of it is a shop item, well, maybe you're limiting your options a bit too much. Oh, double. Alright, well this isn't for an achievement anyway, so the hell with it. Pick that up, let's get moving. So, perhaps this is a bit overly dramatic, but the way I'm looking at the whole thing, it's like Activision said, said, hey, we had a record-breaking year, thanks a lot, guys. Now get the fuck out. 
That, to me, doesn't seem like a very good way to thank the people working under your wing that actually helped make your company what the fuck it is. And in case, in case there's still some question about this, I can't stand Activision. I think they, I think they need to be fucking buried for what they, for what they've done. These people do not deserve to be laid off just because you didn't make as much money as you would have liked. It seems, I mean, this is kind of true when it comes to business of all stripes nowadays, but it seems especially true in the gaming industry where the only amount of money that'll satisfy a lot of these big game publishers isn't just some money, it isn't a lot of money, it's all the money that's ever been conceived of. And they won't be happy until that's what they have, is every single last conceivable and inconceivable dime in the world. And yes, I know the... I know the argument is, well, companies are in business to make money, I get that. But you also have to understand that at the end of the day, these companies are employing people. And just as much as they need to be making money to continue to stay in business, they also need to need to be making sure that the people in their employment can, can continue to provide for their families. This is not sim this is not simply a matter of oh, oh, oh companies got to eat. No, this is a matter of people and their families need to eat. And right now there's about 800 people out there who are going to have a hard time figuring out how to do that because Activision couldn't couldn't make an infinite amount of money to please their shareholders. And don't don't get it wrong, at the end of the day that's what this comes down to is their shareholders. You know, the people who they think are their real customers. They could give a shit less about you, me, the people working for them. All they're worried about is their shareholders. And so long as their shareholders are happy, that's all they care about. Thank you, sir. So, trust me when I say I can say a lot of bad things about Nintendo, but you know, you know what I can't say? That they laid off a bunch of people when, when times were tough for them, just because they needed to make more money. That I can't say. When they're willing to take pay cuts themselves so that they have, so that they're so that their people can continue to have jobs, can continue to work and be successful. That to me shows that to me shows a lot more leadership than just than just declaring how much money you fucking made. And that is why I will always refer to him as the late great Satoru Iwata. Iwata was a good man. I'd also like to point out that it was partially because of Iwata that that Earthbound even got to be. You know, in case we in case we need any any further reason to declare this man wonderful. Like I said, I can think of a lot of negative shit to bash on Nintendo for, but the way the way that they treat their people, not one of them. And so long as we're on this point, let's now talk about what it what exactly it is that these big that these big game publisher sorts are actually after. Like I said, they kind of feel as though their shareholders are their real customers and everything else be damned. But what exactly does that mean? Well, it means that if they have if they have a record if they have some sort of record year, 
their shareholders are expecting them to repeat that performance and then some for the pretty much the rest of eternity. In other words, they act, they flat out expect the impossible. There is no such thing as in, as infinite profit. They're trying to they're trying to make a finite resource infinite. And how are they doing that? Microtransactions, DLC, loot boxes, all the things that we've come to we've come to a bore over the last few years of gaming. That's what the big publishers are are pushing because they need to somehow, in some way, make make profits infinite. I don't know about you, but last I checked, there is no such thing as infinite profit. There's a finite number of people playing a finite number of games with a finite amount of money to spend on their on their hobby. And at some point or another, something's got to give. You can't just continue to expect infinite profits. Cuz the the moment you the moment you make that expectation of yourself and your company, you fucking lost. There was a time in which people saw creative fulfillment making video games. And there's some people that still do, and that's that's why I will continue to um, basically suck the dick of indie games and indie developers. Because a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are just making games because they love to make games. Seeking creative fulfillment, actually wanting to make something artistic. That's what... <laughs> That's part of the reason why I love, why I love indie games, because these people aren't necessarily in it to make all the money in the world, and of course they want to make some money. Don't get me wrong, but they're in it more so for artistic fulfillment and creative vision. And that's what I wanted. All right, pretty much impervious to bullets now. Let's just blow these things up. Do not want the tick. Mostly because if I take it, I'm never getting rid of it again. So keep in mind, whenever I'm whenever I talk about one of these publishers using using bullshit predatory business practices to <clears throat> to try to get try to get people to spend more money that's exactly the sort of thing I'm talking about these these <laughs> these business sorts behind these gaming companies have no shame they have nothing that will ever make them happy aside to know that they own everything that's ever existed these people are not people. As far as I'm concerned, the people behind them, behind the big gaming publishers, EA, Ubisoft, Activision especially, these are not people. They are just corporate objects, and they will dump anyone or anything that they claim to love the moment they can make another dime off of it. These people do not care. They are not your friends. They are not looking out for your well-being. That's part of the reason why I have such a hard time wanting to get into Starlink, because I know it was Ubisoft that, that, that published and developed it. But, it is possible that I'm being a little bit too harsh on Ubisoft. I don't think that their decisions are necessarily top-notch or anything, but... Man, but maybe there is still someone within that company looking looking for creative fulfillment. Maybe there's someone there that still believes, like like I do, that video games can be art. Maybe there's someone there that's okay with a game just being for fun instead of instead of permanent recurrent monetization. Shit, I'll even give I'll even go out of my way to suck Nintendo's dick a little bit more. Ready? Here we go. They have a live service. It's called Splatoon 2. Eh, okay, whatever. It's not helping that much. 
lame. Thing is, outside of the Octo Expansion DLC, they have not asked for a single dime out of anyone aside from the price of entry. You buy Splatoon 2, guess what? You can play Splatoon 2. There's no microtransactions, there's no loot boxes. The game is, you know, ripe for that sort of thing. But, just, but it's not in the game. It's not in the game because, I have to imagine, they don't want it in the game. And I don't think that's... I don't think that's too hard to see. Oh, that was pointless. Well, at least it gave me some post-hit and vulnerability. That and Nintendo has continued to support Splatoon 2 for a long time, even well past the point which they said, nah, we're not going to support it anymore. I can see you. Wow, a shot actually hit me through, the, through my barrier of bullshit. Surprised. Uh, that was beautifully easy, and I gave me plenty of chance to talk to talk about something that's been stewing in my brain for a while. The point that I'm getting at is all these big game publishers who are saying that they that they need more monetization, more microtransactions, more this, more that, more loot boxes, willing to break the law in order to keep that shit. Fuck all of them. I've been boycotting EA for years because of what they've been doing. <clears throat> and I've been, and I've, I've added Activision to that list. Not recently, but I'm definitely willing to bring it up now. Activision, if you're listening to this, I guarantee you're not because my channel is pretty tiny. Fuck you, fuck your business decisions, fuck your CFO, fuck everything about you. You people deserve nothing but the worst. How dare you lay off that many people when you could afford to be paying them to let them to let them and their families eat. Fuck you. Fuck you hard. I hope you all get what's coming to you one of these days. Anyways, that's enough anger from me. I'm going to sign out now before I decide to punch my monitor. This is Dark Sage Walker, and I know I constantly ask you to like, subscribe, and do all of that stuff, but let's be real here for a moment. The thing that makes me the happiest is when you watch and share the videos. That's all I really want out of all of this. Sure, I'd love to be noticed, but so long as you're watching, so long as you're sharing it with your friends and go, Hey, check out that guy who yells about video games! That's what I really like, so thank you again, I'll be seeing you.